Achlen, hi. Welcome back to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin. In this episode of the Science Behind Language Learning, we're talking about motivation. How much do you want to learn another language? Why? How hard are you willing to work for it? Everyone approaches second language learning with a unique set of goals and expectations. But does this affect the language learning process and outcomes? Let's find out. Today's video is part of a set of videos about the individual factors that influence language learning. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and be the first to know when new videos come out. Motivation plays a role in so much of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's think about some examples. Jerry has his eye on a promotion at work, so he puts in extra hours. Simi has always dreamed of running a marathon, so she runs a little farther each day. And Jamie is dedicated to animal rights, so they decide to adopt a vegan diet. People are motivated to put in effort or make changes for all kinds of reasons in every facet of their lives. And that effort often comes with rewards. Jerry's extra hours helped him develop some new skills. Simi is in the best shape of her life and Jamie's cholesterol levels are fantastic. Okay, but what does this have to do with language? Well, to make good progress in language learning, it really helps to have good reasons for studying a language, like wanting to learn more about another culture or obtaining a language certification for work or school, as well as positive attitudes towards a language and culture. But reasons and attitudes alone are not enough. You also need to put in the work. At the end of the day, you are the one who needs to seek opportunities for learning and practice actively study and remember what you've been exposed to, and keep your enthusiasm up over time. This is language learning motivation in a nutshell. The will to start and keep learning a new language. When you look at it that way, it's no surprise that motivated learners tend to be more successful at second language learning. Like other individual differences related to language learning, motivation isn't just one thing that you have or you don't. It's a complex combination of multiple components. Three components that language researchers often look at when it comes to motivation are goals, effort, and reflection. When we talk about goals and language learning motivation, what we're really talking about are the reasons you're learning a language, the expectations you have for yourself, and what you want to achieve. All of these things reflect your values, attitudes, and beliefs about language learning and the target language community. For example, you might be studying a language because it's a mandatory school subject or because you want to get a job in another country. Or you might want to speak to your grandparents in their native language or simply fit in with a certain cultural group. These goals tend to fit into one of two main orientations or guiding forces in language learning. If you're learning a language for practical purposes, for example, to meet a college language requirement, then you're guided by an instrumental orientation. However, if you're learning a language because you have a personal interest in the target language and culture, for example, wanting to reconnect with your cultural heritage, then you're guided by an integrative orientation. In reality, most second language learners tend to have a mix of both integrative and instrumental orientation, but a higher level of integrative orientation, which is more of an intrinsic drive, may give learners a small edge in terms of language achievement. Now, goals and orientations are a big part of the motivation puzzle, but they don't count for much if you don't act on them. Effort is another part of motivation that comes into play during the language learning process itself. What are you actually doing to achieve your goals? Are you putting in the work? And are you keeping up that work over time? Effort is the translation of goals and reasons into action. Now, this could mean doing your homework, studying flashcards, seeking out additional opportunities for learning like podcasts, music, movies, books, and apps, or even setting aside some time to chat with a speaker of the language you're trying to learn. The amount of effort that people put into language learning is, perhaps unsurprisingly, related to internal factors like attitudes and goals. In other words, if you like a language and have compelling reasons for studying it, you'll probably be more willing to put in extra time. 
But effort can also be influenced by external factors, like how engaging and rewarding a classroom environment is or what you think others expect of you. In fact, studies show that all of these factors are important predictors of how much effort people put into language learning. So as language learners, our goals change and effort seems to be fairly easily influenced as well. As a result, motivation isn't something that's fixed in place. It can actually fluctuate over time. Studies have shown that motivation can change when you enter into a new period of your life. For example, some learners don't realize the value of speaking another language until they enter the workforce or spend time abroad. Even something as simple as having a really good day in your language class can change your motivation. Reflection or self-evaluation plays an important role in understanding these changes. Now, some level of reflection takes place, consciously or unconsciously, anytime you do something with your language. Did I meet the goals that I set for myself? How much effort did I put into learning? Did that effort pay off? How do I know? And for better or for worse, these reflections feed back into your motivation to continue learning. For example, maybe one day you realize that you're able to have more meaningful conversations in your second language than before. This could make you more willing to go out and talk to people in the future. Alternatively, maybe you put a lot of effort into studying for a grammar test, but just didn't get the grade you hoped you would. This could make you less willing to study as hard for your next exam. But keep in mind that your reflections on a given language experience, as well as how they feed back into your motivation, are affected by the internal and external factors that we've already discussed. That is, your reasons for studying a language, the amount of effort you put into it, and the environment you're studying in. So even if you didn't do so well on that grammar test despite studying really hard, your motivation might withstand the blow if you have a really supportive teacher, or if it's important to you to connect with your grandmother who only speaks Vietnamese. Okay, so what does all of this mean for the average language learner? Well, it may confirm your intuitions that it's important to find experiences that are interesting, engaging, and achievable. In other words, those that make sense to you and make you want to put in that extra effort. This could mean reading your favorite books, listening to podcasts that interest you, playing video games, or even just finding a good way to fit language learning into your own routine. Actually, one of my favorite things about the Mango app is the autoplay feature because it's hard for me to find time to add language learning into my routine. But this feature actually allows me to practice Italian while I'm doing other things like taking a walk or doing the dishes. All of this to say that you should seek out experiences that suit you and your goals. If you're not quite sure where to start, here are five research approved tips to keep up your motivation. Number one, set goals, work towards them and evaluate how things are going. Number two, set up a study routine and make learning a habit. If you're using Mango, make sure you turn on your study reminders. Number three, make learning social. Learn with a friend or in a group. Fun fact, every Mango account comes with five profiles so that you can share the Mango love with your family and friends. Number four, be your own cheerleader. Pat yourself on the back when you hit those language learning goals and take it easy on yourself when things don't go so well. And number five, seek out opportunities to learn about and interact with the culture associated with your target language. Cross-cultural contact keeps motivation levels high helps you develop integrative orientation and supports language learning success. Researchers believe that learners who use these techniques can overcome a lack of motivation or declining enthusiasm and even come up with new reasons to keep studying their language. So what are you waiting for? Well, there you have it. Are you feeling motivated? Let's recap what we've learned. Motivation is the willingness to start and keep learning a new language. It affects things like how willing you are to seek out opportunities for learning, as well as how much you'll end up achieving. Second, motivation is primarily made up of goals, effort, and reflection. Your attitudes, goals, and reasons for studying a language can affect how much effort you commit to the language learning process. So can a positive learning environment. Third, motivation can, and usually does, change over time. Reflecting on your language learning experiences can influence your motivation. Fourth, 
Motivation really comes down to finding learning experiences that work for you and make you want to work at language learning. Finally, we covered some tips for keeping up your own language learning motivation. Try them out and let us know how it goes. Do you have any motivation boosting tips? We want to hear about them. If you like this video and you want to stay tuned for more videos about the science behind language learning, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If there's a topic that you want to learn more about, tell us about it in the comments. Be sure to check out the description for this video for some free materials on motivation, including a sample motivation questionnaire that will help you figure out your own motivation profile. Thanks for watching. Ma salama. Pavel. Hey there, me again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to get your free goodies, which you can access right here through the link on the screen. In our next video, we'll be talking about how anxiety comes into play when you learn a new language and why a little anxiety might be a good thing. If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, ring that notification bell. In the meantime, you can catch up on all of our existing videos right here. We'll see you next time on the science behind language learning.